They said it would change everything. A 450 horsepower outboard motor that runs on the most abundant element in the universe. No gasoline, no emissions, just pure, clean power and water coming out the back. When Yamaha unveiled it, the boating world held its breath. This was supposed to be the future, but here's what they didn't tell you. 18 months later, that engine still has nowhere to fuel up. No price tag, no release date, and behind closed doors, engineers are facing a problem that money alone cannot fix. So what went wrong? Is hydrogen the future of boating, or the biggest broken promise the marine industry has ever made? If you've ever dreamed of owning a boat that doesn't burn a drop of fuel, you need to hear this story before you spend another dollar. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications, because what you're about to learn could save you from the most expensive mistake of your boating life. Now let me ask you something. Would you buy a boat today if you knew there was nowhere to fill it up tomorrow? Drop your answer in the comments. This is the truth about hydrogen power, and why 2026 might not be the revolution we were promised. February 14th. 2024, the Miami International Boat Show. Thousands of boating enthusiasts crowded the docks under the Florida sun. But the real action was happening inside the convention center. Yamaha had been teasing something for months. Whispers spread through the industry. And when the curtain finally dropped, even the skeptics went silent. There it was, the world's first hydrogen-powered outboard engine for recreational boats a gleaming V8 mounted on the transom of a modified Regulator 26XO center console. The cowling read 5.6 liters. The badge said XTO, but everything underneath was different. This was not an electric motor. This was not a hybrid. This was a full combustion engine that burned hydrogen instead of gasoline. And the only thing coming out of the exhaust was water. Yamaha had partnered with two industry giants to make it happen, Roush, the legendary engineering firm with more than two decades of hydrogen fuel system experience in aerospace and automotive applications, and Regulator Marine, one of the most respected boat builders on the East Coast. Together, they had done what many thought was impossible. Ben Speciale, president of Yamaha's U.S. Marine Business Unit, stood before the crowd and laid out the vision. Carbon neutrality for operations by 2035 carbon neutrality for products by 2050. And hydrogen, he said, was a viable method of achieving those goals. The numbers were staggering. Three carbon fiber tanks stored 23 kilograms of hydrogen at 700 bar pressure. That is over 10,000 pounds per square inch. Preliminary testing suggested a range of 50 to 75 nautical miles, and the engine itself was based on Yamaha's most powerful offshore platform, capable of producing up to 450 horsepower. Joan Maxwell, president of Regulator Marine, captured the moment perfectly. If we do not look for a new source, she said, we will never find a new source. Innovation starts by asking questions. The marine industry was asking. And for one shining moment, hydrogen seemed like the answer. But answers, as it turns out, are never that simple. The engineers knew something the marketing team could not say out loud. Hydrogen is not gasoline, and physics does not negotiate. The first problem was storage. Hydrogen has roughly one-tenth the volumetric energy density of marine diesel. Ken Portin, general manager of sustainable fuels at the Finnish company Vertsila, put it bluntly. To carry the same amount of energy, you need a tank volume almost eight times larger than what you would need for a conventional gas engine. On the Regulator prototype, those three cylindrical tanks consumed nearly all the space below deck. The fish boxes were gone. The storage compartments were gone. The marine head was gone. Joan Maxwell admitted the tanks were larger than she had originally envisioned. Yamaha's engineers had to design custom mounting systems because the tanks expand during fueling they needed room to move without compromising the hull structure. Then came the power question. Hydrogen combustion engines produce approximately 10% less horsepower than gasoline equivalents of the same displacement. Industry data from Cummins showed a 6.7-liter gasoline engine producing 325 horsepower. 
the hydrogen version of the same engine produced 290. If that ratio held true for the Yamaha H2, the actual output would be closer to 400 horsepower. Still impressive. But not the 450 the headlines promised. And unlike fuel cell systems, which convert hydrogen electrochemically with zero emissions, combustion engines still produce trace amounts of nitrogen oxides. Cleaner than gasoline, yes, but not perfectly clean. The biggest obstacle, however, was not on the boat. It was everywhere else. As of late 2025, there are zero marine hydrogen fueling stations in North America. Not one. Rausch had to coordinate a special event just to fill the prototypes tanks for the first time. Matt Van Benschoten, Vice President of Advanced Engineering at Rausch, called it a big moment. But that moment revealed an uncomfortable truth. Yamaha had built an engine for a world that did not exist yet. The motor worked. The fuel system worked. What did not exist was anywhere to fill up. Since the SEMA show on November 2024, Yamaha has gone quiet. No production timeline, no pricing announcement, no dealer preparation, no waiting list. The official statement remains the same. We look forward to sharing more about the H2 outboard as we continue to test and collect data. In corporate language, that means do not hold your breath. No major boat manufacturer has announced plans to integrate hydrogen propulsion. No marine dealer network has prepared inventory strategies. The prototype that thrilled 160,000 attendees at the Las Vegas Auto Show now sits in a Yamaha facility in Georgia. Occasionally, engineers take it out for testing. But the excitement has faded into something quieter, something that looks a lot like waiting. Economics tells the real story. Green hydrogen, the kind produced through renewable electrolysis that makes the environmental promise meaningful, currently costs approximately four times more than gray hydrogen. Gray hydrogen comes from natural gas and still produces significant carbon emissions. It defeats the purpose. At current retail prices of around $24 per kilogram, a 50-mile trip on the H2 prototype could cost over $500 in fuel alone. A comparable gasoline outboard would burn through $80 to $100 for recreational boaters watching their budgets that math does not work. Meanwhile, Yamaha hedged its bets. In 2024, the company acquired Torquedo, the German leader in electric marine propulsion. That acquisition signaled something important. Hydrogen might not be the only path forward. It might not even be the primary one. Other players moved differently. Yanmar in Japan began developing dual fuel hydrogen and diesel engines for commercial vessels, with land-based verification scheduled for 2026. Norway's MF Hydra Ferry achieved 95% emissions reduction running on liquid hydrogen. But that system requires cryogenic storage infrastructure no recreational marina could ever support. The Regulator 26XO remains a technological marvel. But a marvel without infrastructure is just a showpiece. And right now, that is exactly what the hydrogen outboard has become. A beautiful prototype waiting for a world that has not arrived. So why is hydrogen struggling when the technology clearly works? The answer is not engineering, it is economics. And economics are brutal. The first barrier is physics itself. Compressed hydrogen at 700 bar still requires eight times the tank volume of gasoline to deliver equivalent range. For recreational boats, where deck space and weight distribution determine everything from performance to resale value, that is a design problem with no easy solution. You cannot hide eight times the tank volume. You can only sacrifice something else. The second barrier is the infrastructure paradox. Marinas will not install hydrogen fueling stations without consumer demand. Consumers will not buy hydrogen boats without fueling stations. Neither side moves first. Both sides wait. And while they wait, nothing gets built. The Department of Energy has set ambitious targets. By 2030, they want 15% of new recreational boat sales to be hydrogen, electric, or hybrid. 
They want hydrogen refueling infrastructure across 10 major boating regions. But targets are not budgets. And as of today, no specific marine hydrogen stations have been funded anywhere in the United States. The third barrier is the hydrogen itself. Only 1 to 2% of global hydrogen production is truly green, made from renewable electricity through electrolysis. The rest is grey hydrogen, extracted from natural gas with significant carbon emissions. The environmental promise of hydrogen depends entirely on green production scaling up. That has not happened yet. The fourth barrier is regulatory uncertainty. The International Maritime Organization is still developing hydrogen safety guidelines. Those regulations are not expected until late 2025, at the earliest. No standardized marine safety codes exist for recreational hydrogen vessels. Boat builders cannot commit to production when they do not know what rules they will need to follow. One marine industry consultant familiar with Yamaha's testing program summarized it simply. The technology works, he said. The business case does not. Not yet. Hydrogen is not failing because engineers made mistakes. It is failing because the entire ecosystem required to support it does not exist. And building that ecosystem will take years, maybe decades. So where does this leave us? And more importantly, where does it leave you? Yamaha is not abandoning hydrogen, but they are not betting everything on it either. The company continues what they call a multi-path development approach. Electric propulsion through Torquedo. Sustainable marine fuels that can work in existing engines. And hydrogen research that may or may not lead to a commercial product. Industry groups like the National Marine Manufacturers Association and the International Council of Marine Industry Associations are lobbying hard for renewable fuel infrastructure and regulatory clarity. They know the recreational boating sector accounts for less than one-tenth of one percent of global greenhouse gas emissions. But they also know the industry depends on clean water and healthy ecosystems. The motivation to change is real. The pathway is not. Norway may provide the first real-world proving ground. By 2026, all cruise ships and ferries sailing through Norwegian fjords must be emissions-free. That mandate is forcing investment in hydrogen infrastructure that the rest of the world has avoided. If Norway succeeds, other nations may follow. If it fails, hydrogen skeptics will have all the ammunition they need. For the 35 million Americans who own boats, hydrogen remains a concept on a show floor not an option at the fuel dock. And with no timeline, no price, and no infrastructure, the dream of clean propulsion stays exactly where it has always been. Somewhere in the future. Always the future. Yamaha built something remarkable, an engine that proves hydrogen can work on the water. But proving a technology and scaling a revolution are two different things. The marine industry has reinvented itself before from sail to steam, from two-stroke to four-stroke, from carburetors to direct injection. Each transition took decades. Each required infrastructure the previous generation could not imagine. Maybe hydrogen will follow that path, or maybe it will remain what it is today, a beautiful prototype waiting for a world that has not arrived yet. The engine is ready. The question is whether the rest of us are.